Hello, welcome. It's Davita Stamp and Spot. I apologize for the late arrival. I was trying to uh, start it and it wouldn't start. So I had to stop and start all over again. So now let's see if we're actually on. I hope we are. Yep, it shows that I'm on, good deal. Well, I hope you're having a good week. We had an amazing weekend. It was um, our international meetings with Stampin' Up! demonstrators all over the world. And they did, a, the Home Office did a phenomenal job of teaching us techniques and ideas and cards. Um, we got to see a sneak peek at the January to June catalog, as well as the celebration for January and February. So it was a really fun weekend. But all the neat things they showed, I can't show you yet. So um, today, I wanted to share with you something that has just inspired me the last two or three weeks. The sunrises and sunsets here in Kansas have just been phenomenal. And every morning, especially as I was driving to school, I would look at it and try to figure out what Stampin' Up! colors were in there and how maybe I could try to recreate that. So I'm gonna need your help today because um, I need some ideas and some help on how to make this work. So I'm going to switch this over. Uh-oh, what happened here? All right, there we go. I <laughs> hit the wrong button. All right, um, let's see here. Hey, Marie. Good, we're on. Julie, Chris, great. Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm going to need your help. So if you were going to start doing sunrise, sunset, would you do brights, regals, subtles? Which color family do you think you would probably use to create your sunrises? So in the comments, tell me. Would you use the Brights collection, the Regals, or the Settles? And while you're doing that, I'm going to switch over and get my camera set up so that we're showing you my screen. All right, there we go. All right. OK, Julie says Bright. All right, what do you think, Marie and Chris? Brights or subtles or fiddler on the roof? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you now you've done it to me. Now that's gonna be stuck in my head. Once I get that song in my head, I cannot get it out. So all right, brights. All right, so you guys think the way I do. So let me grab my brights here. Okay, so then my next question is, do you think the yellow, the da, um, Daffodil Delight, should be in the middle here or up at the top? If you're thinking of sunrises and sunsets, where do you think it sits? Is the yellow in the middle or is it at the top? And the reason I'm asking is because Kent's opinion was the opposite of mine. So then I started rethinking this going, oh, well, maybe I'm going at this backwards. So what do you think? Get my brights out here. I'm using Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody, Flirty Flamingo. And the gorgeous grape was a little too dark for me. So I snagged the Highland Heather instead. And then I found that I'm kind of mixing Coastal Cabana and um, Balmy Blue for my, my blue sky. Okay, Chris says the middle. Julie says the middle. All right, so you guys are thinking like Kent was. 
So we'll go this that way. Um, so I'm going to start with my blending brush and um, I'm going to start with the yellow in the middle. I'm going to go with my Daffodil Delight. And we learned at our last team meeting that you want to go and tap it without your putting pressure with your finger then start off the edge and then work your way in. And I had took Kent to his physical therapy tonight. And as we're driving home, I think I scared him because all of a sudden I said, look, look at that sunset. I'm trying to figure out how to make that work on my stamping stuff. And it's just really frustrating me because I can't get it as pretty. Well, and why should I be surprised that I can't match God's creation? But I want to try. So I'm going to start with Daffodil Delight. Then I'm going to take some Mango Melody. And I'm going to add that in up above. Oh, my Mango Melody needs to be re-inked. It's kind of old and crabby. I think it's interesting how these blending brushes, when you just pound them uh, for, to get the excess off, they leave kind of a cool impression. If I could figure out how to be consistent with that, I think I'd do something with that too. All right, so there's my Mango Melody that is not working very well. It definitely needs some ink, which is interesting because at the team meeting, everything had too much ink in it. So I guess I just can't seem to get it right. I'm gonna add a little pink here. These sunsets have just been unbelievable. It's almost like they have gold mixed in with them or something. Oh, they've just been phenomenal, especially in the morning on the way to school. One of the things I've been trying to figure out is that the clouds are almost a mixture of white and blue and gray. And it's almost like they have a spotlight on them or something. And I've been trying to figure out how I could do that and make it look right. So today I tried when I got home um, from school, and before, well, no, I guess it was after I took kids therapy. I took my white ink and I mixed in just a little bit of misty moonlight on one of my clear blocks. And then I inked it up and um, stamped it. And I wasn't really crazy with it, when, uh, crazy with it after I got it done or happy, I guess I should say. Oh, I don't, can't put my hands on it. I'll show you here in a little bit. I tried just a bunch of different clouds and stuff. It was, um, so then I tried some white and tried adding a blending brush or not, uh, our blending, our blends, a blend over the top, but I didn't really like that because it left extra where I didn't want it. All right now, and I think it's got a little blue down at the bottom too. So I'm going to add just a little bit down here. Not very much, just a little bit. And I wanted these cards to be, I want them to send to people that maybe are struggling or just need to remind of the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things we see in nature because they just oh, have been so pretty. All right, and of course, with all the leaves coming off the trees, then the um, trees are black and they show the um, all the colors through the branches. Oh, it's just been amazing. So I may be messing this up the way you guys would do it with your color scheme. So I'll be anxious to have you guys post some pictures of how you would do your sunsets. All right, so then I grabbed the tree from there we go. Beauty of Friendship, and I'm using this piece right here. I tried it in brown, but I really didn't like that because so often when you see the um, sunrise or the sunset, the trees are black because they have that shadow from the sun and we're on the back side of it. So, um, I'm going to stamp them. I see Cheryl and Cindy have joined us. Yay, yay, yay. All right. 
And I really want the yellow to be where it's coming through the trees because that's where it's just been so stunning. I think most of you know our daughter has to have surgery this week. And maybe this is God's way of just reminding me he's got everything in control and, and I've needed that. So I'm going to do five trees. And then I noticed that a lot of times there's dark shadow at the bottom. So I took just one of the tops of the trees that would actually be, um, if you are adding your green leaves or whatever, and just creating shadow behind the trees so that they're not just kind of floating in the air. Like that. And I'm not going to add a lot to it because I really want just the beauty of our sunrises to be seen. And then I'm going to use Thinking of You. If I can find my chamois, there we go. Hey, Denise, how are you? Goodness lady, I haven't seen you in ages. If we'd ever have a crop at the high school again, I'd get to see you. All right, and I think I'll stamp it. I know you guys won't be surprised at all. I'm using purple. It was fun this weekend at our team. Uh, well, it wasn't. Our team got together to watch the videos from Salt Lake City from the meetings. And uh, they spoiled me a lot of the stuff that I got was in purples, which you guys won't be surprised because you guys all know that's my favorite. All right, so I'm going to show you what this looks like with a couple behind it. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Now, would you do these darker or do you think you'd leave them light like that? So that's my next question. Should I try to make the coloring even darker or should I leave it light like that? Dark or light? Oh, Marie, you got me. Now I'm going to be thinking Fiddler on the Roof all evening. If I were a rich man. Ah, not funny. All right. So let me show you some of the others. Okay, Denise, you say light, light. Okay, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Now, when I cut these papers, I purposely cut them so they were um, basically a fourth of an inch too big because I wanted to be able to trim off if I accidentally got my blending brush uh, too close to the edge and it um, left a glob or whatever. So I wanna double mat these. So I'm gonna grab my paper cutter. Yes, I know this is old, but it's my favorite. So I'm gonna use it here. All right. And I'm going to go with the Daffodil Delight. So I really tried to start thinking outside the box. After I started putting these um, ideas together, because I wanted to add some images that I didn't actually have a specific stamp for. So I'll show you what I did here in a minute. Let's see if my adhesive this looks like it's about out let's see if it'll get me through tonight so i think most of you have probably already seen this but starting tomorrow stampin up is doing their seasonal sale and it's taking the place of the sale that we used to have right around thanksgiving black friday cyber monday all that kind of stuff and what they've done is they've reduced the price of our cardstock by 10% our inks by 15% and our dyes by 20%. So if there are some of your basics that you um, need to stock up on, now would be the time to do it. It starts tomorrow and goes through Thursday, 16th to 18th. So I'll be putting orders in every day. Um, if your order's under 
150. If you'd use that host code, that would help me out. If it's over 150, please make sure you take the Stampin' Rewards so that you get the benefit of that. All right, so I want to show you another one. And part of the reason I was almost late was because I was having too much fun playing. After I got Kent home and from physical therapy, um, we were lazy and I we stopped to get a sandwich before we came home. And then um, I got home and it was like, oh, I gotta hurry and get this stuff done. Okay, so these are the mountains from Mountain Air. And I love, 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 love this set. So in my head, I was imagining, well, what would this look like if we were out in Denver? And probably part of that is because Brandon and Shelby are out there and they just moved to a brand new house that they're gonna be able to see the mountains from their house. So I can't wait, wait, wait to see it. All right, so this time I wanna add the water down below. So I'm going to grab my blue and I think I'm gonna do the balmy blue. I think it's gonna be the better watercolor. I did the mountains in misty moonlight. I don't know what it is about that color, but I love it with the mountains. Maybe they should have called it misty mountain moonlight or something, I don't know. So as I was doing this, I said, you don't hardly ever see the water when it's just still with no motion every once in a while, but not very often. I'm just coming back in with a little bit of the misty moonlight. I'm adding it just to get some variation so it's not all the same color. And because I stamped these in the misty moonlight, I don't think it hurts to go over them a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm looking at this thinking, I need something like waves. So I'm looking at my stamps. How about this? This is the birch. Yeah, the birch large die or not large stamp. And so I decided I wanted to use this for the water, but I didn't want to risk having it come up high up here. And I kind of wanted to pick and choose what water I used. So I grabbed my balmy blue marker and I decided I kind of like this middle section here so it's just adding a little bit Linda I see you're on it would have been so fun to see you and Deb at convention this year but at least I got to see your faces on Facebook okay so you can see I did that here and I'm kind of marked with my fingers where the mountains are so I'm going to just go like this and rub it across there. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that kind of look like waves in there? And of course, you could come back and add some more if you wanted. But I thought that was a pretty good way to put just a little bit of wave in there. And then the rest of it, I just sponged like what I just showed you. So let me show you how this one turned out. I decided to try this one with Misty Moonlight paper. And, and with the purple again. I know you guys aren't surprised. All right, so see, doesn't that look pretty? This time I also pulled the clouds from Mountaineer. They've got these fluffy ones. And I would welcome your suggestions on this one too. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, I'm glad you like it. Um, I've tried stamping it in Misty Moonlight where I stamped off twice. I've tried stamping it in Balmy Blue. I've tried stamping it in white, stamping them in white. But the clouds that really intrigued me a couple of weeks ago is they were white, but it almost looked like they had silver lining underneath them. So anybody have any suggestions on how we could stamp that and make it look really cool? So that was one of the things I was struggling with, was how to get the beautiful clouds to be the right colors. So I'm going to show you some of the things. I took a few of the inks with me to school today so that I could play and didn't even have time to mount them on cardstock. So, so see, here's one where I tried, I stamped the, the clouds in uh, Misty Moonlight 
and that stamped off Misty Moonlight, and that stamped off again, and then I accidentally did it in purple, didn't really care for the purple, and tried just doing the trees randomly. So that's how that would look. And I thought the thinking of you would just be perfect for so many occasions. So this one here, I tried it with the regal colors. So I used um, crushed curry. This is actually rich razzleberry. And then I pulled in um, the gorgeous grape on this one and then added the blue up there and then used the rich razzleberry for my card base. Here's another one. Here's with the mountains. And this one I tried balmy blue for the clouds and then the mountains with the colors. This one here was one of the first ones I did. And I did this backwards with the way you guys were thinking because I had my blue down here. So it should have been the other way. Then I did this one. I love the colors in this one. I'm not sure it's real, really nature's idea for what it should look like. Oh, that's a good idea, Denise. She said, use the pens to add the color on your cloud stamp. So would you do blue and gray then maybe? Or would you? I tried taking our chalk, our chalk pen, and you can see here, I tried to add it, but because the sponging was behind it, it didn't turn out white. It kind of took the color of the sponges there. And then this one here, you know how you can take the, your um, painter's tape and run it across here. So for this one, I thought it'd be fun just to show that variation. So I took my um, painter's tape, pulled off a strip, and then what you wanna do is put it on your clothing so that you get a lot of the sticky off. So I took it, um, pretend these are my pants. I rubbed it on here two or three times. So it's sticky, but not real sticky. And then I took the tape and just tore it so that I got a nice varied look. And I had started to work on another one and then the bell rang. And I realized just now I never finished that one. So I'll have to do that one and I'll show you online how it turned out. But then you could take your papers and you can do it two ways. If you want the straight line up at the top, you can do it like that and then do this. So your middle section would be like this one where you'd sponge and do this, or you could flip it around and um, have the straight here in the middle. And if I did that, I'd probably use that new stamp set we have that says grateful. And I probably just put grateful in there and then it would have all the layers around. So you're all going, boy, she wasn't very prepared to write tonight. And you know what? You're right. I was not, I did not have as much time at home today as I thought gray and silver. That's a good idea. Thanks, Denise. I will try that. And I will try posting the pictures down below this video so you can kind of see how I put all these things together. So anyway, I would love to see your ideas for how to create the amazing census. I think everybody on here right now uh, is in Kansas, except Linda. Linda, you're clear up north. And I'm assuming you get probably just about as beautiful sunsets as we do here. So I'll go through these again, just to show you the different looks. I will get these mounted on cards and post pictures. Um, I just haven't had time to be quite honest. Hope you like the idea of using the birch for your water waves here. And then I'll finish this one up too with the sponging and everything. I did want to remind you on the sale, here's the flyer, 10% off cardstock, 15% off the ink pads, 20% off the dies. Then to make the deal even better, if you were to sign up and join my team for, are you ready, $75, you get $125 worth of merchandise that you pick, you can include these. So if you include the 10% off the cardstock, the 15% off the ink pads, 20% off the dies, you're gonna get even more for your $75. You do pay tax, but Stampin' Up! pays the shipping. So 
keep that in mind. I would love to have you join my team. I have an amazing group of ladies. We have a great time together. Uh, matter of fact, they had so much fun chatting on Saturday. Sometimes we couldn't hear the videos because they were enjoying being together so much. And that's a good thing. Um, and I have emailed this to you. And the next pages have, they've even gone to the trouble of giving you the item number, the name of the stamp set, what page it's on, and the prices as well as the sale price. So you can go look through there. They're even letting you do the 12 by 12 card stock and the combination. So like all the settles where you get, I think it's two of each color, those are included. Then they've done the ink pads, they've done the dies. So they're making it as easy as possible for you to stock up on those things that we use all the time. So I think that's everything. Oh, Denise, thank you for saying it was lots of good ideas. Um, the last three weeks have really been a challenge for me. And um, I told Danae and Colin tonight, I'm hoping for a change to not be behind. Maybe I can get caught up. Um, and I had this all ready for you. I was gonna show you here. So I just stamped that. And then there is a really cool little moon or sun, depending on what you wanna call it. I guess I always think of it as the moon in here. And you guys know how to do this, but I'll do it real quick just so you see it. But you put your mask on there and then I would stamp it with my yellow. And by using the mask, then you can just get part of the sun or moon that's behind the mountains. Isn't that cool? So then I can blend in my yellow. And what I'll do is I'll leave this on here because by leaving it on, I don't have to worry about getting too much yellow on my mountains. And then I can add in a little bit of color afterwards. All right, I think I'm gonna quit yakking now. Thank you so much for joining. It was so great to have so many of you jump on tonight and watch. Um, I will be on next Monday night. I do know it's Thanksgiving, but since it's Monday, hopefully you can uh, take a few minutes for a creative break. It will be a create with me. So um, by Friday, I hope, I will send out the details for the papers that you need to have ready, what stamp set I'm using so that you can create with me as I create Monday at seven. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next Monday. Have a great week.